As I said, I'm Damien. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Capitech. Um, my background is actually military in Australia, if you could pick up the accent. Uh, and I was a trainer uh, in the Australian Air Force and then later in Saudi Arabia and then finally in the United Arab Emirates, uh, of course. And um, so Capitech, we're an e-learning company. Um, we're based, of course, based here in the UAE and we very much specialize in development of uh, custom e-learning solutions uh, for clients, primarily in the UAE, but also wider in the GCC and, and further abroad too. Yeah, sure. So um, I it was in about 2011, I was starting to develop apps um, for the what were relatively new devices like iPhones and iPads and just exploring what the capabilities of those platforms could be. Uh, and right around that time, I met my uh, uh, co-founder who, who would become my co-founder, Jason, who was similarly ex-military. And so uh, we saw a what we could only call a pretty poor implementation of what was uh, called e-learning and they're basically putting PDFs onto iPads and I figured that uh, that we could do better than that um, knowing what what the capabilities of the devices were we started uh, putting together what our um, our backgrounds in training and um, what we know about um, IT I've got a computer science degree fusing those two together and, and you know lo and behold we came up with e-learning uh, so it took a few years before we we really finalized on the type of products that we were going to to deliver to our clients. But um, thankfully we've been able to grow to a team of uh, uh, 45 now, and we deliver to many of the leading companies uh, and, and uh, government entities here in the UAE and abroad. Um, well, yeah, I mean, COVID certainly has, uh, has influenced everyone. And, and uh, I mean, we, we certainly weren't spared, but um, we, you know, we were already working primarily remotely. So from a business mechanics perspective, it wasn't like we had to transition into remote work. We were already using all the tools and, and resources that you would already need to do in order to transition to um, working remotely. And of course, we, we, we work with digital products. Um, so uh, there wasn't anything that, um, you know, physically encumbered us uh, from doing our actual work. Uh, from the business perspective, um, a, a lot of people will say to me uh, immediately go, well, COVID, it must have been great for you guys because everyone's doing e-learning. And, and I mean, there is an element of truth to that. But the reality was that for a lot of uh, training companies and, and, and departments in large organisations, they were really scrambling to, to replace what they were already doing. And often that meant doing things like virtual classrooms um, so they could immediately have a solution to their current need. And of course, budgets were, were often tight um, during that period. As, as many people say, the, the first budget to go is the L&D budget. So, so whilst it wasn't the massive rush to e-learning that most would expect, um, there certainly was a big transformation there um, where people were having virtual classrooms and so on. Um, so we saw our clients that were already using e-learning uh, lean into it even more as uh, having training in the classroom uh, no longer was a, even for a long period of time, even a possibility. I see there being three elements that set us apart. Uh, the first is that we are based here in the OE. Uh, of course, and, and there are other companies that are too, but we have experience in training um, Emiratis and Saudis prior to that. So we have, we've very much got our finger on the pulse as far as uh, ensuring that we're developing a culturally attuned e-learning content. So by being situated here and, and having that kind of experience, we can really be confident that we're building e-learning that is, that is suitable for, for our target audience. Um, the second one I'd say is our communications. And I mean, you're gonna to have to take our word for this at this point, but we really take a lot of pride in, um, in the, how transparent and available we are to our, our clients. Um, unfortunately, uh, in tech in general, and you see this in websites and, and, and various other projects that you might um, not see what the outcome of a, uh, a project is until the very end. And, and it might not end up what, being exactly what you like. We use tools and there's so, many, uh, so much resources out there and tools available that allow you to be very transparent, communicate very clearly. Of course, everyone's using Zoom now, so it's very easy to have that transparent communication uh, with your clients. Um, and the final thing uh, is, is the actual product itself. I mean, I could say these other two elements, but 
if we weren't developing good e-learning, then our clients wouldn't come back to us because there'll be other options there that um, might be more uh, might be more cost effective for them, so on. So our mission is to create world class e-learning, uh, and that's really our core north star: is developing what is the best in the world at what we do. And the people that we demonstrate our products to, they often will say, you know, we, we haven't seen any better than this. So the proof is somewhat in the pudding of what we can actually develop for e-learning, uh, our e-learning clients. It's, um, one of the interesting things with COVID was of course, that uh, the exposure across every population to e-learning greatly increased. So, uh, you know, Jason, my business partners, children as young as five and six were doing what they were calling e-learning. So the, the society's general awareness of what uh, can be done remotely and can be done online has been greatly transformed. So with the digital transformations for companies in general, I think it's been accelerated by many, many years and remote work uh, I think is here to stay, which is, I think, just wonderful. So the people will be going back into the office, I'm sure, uh, if not already, then very, um, then very soon. But there will be a shift towards being able to have that flexibility and being able to work remotely. Um, the classrooms will certainly come back. But what I'm really uh, hopeful for is that we'll see a greater adoption of, at the very least, blended learning. And so that is utilising both uh, what you can do online, uh, what that's particularly strong at, like the flexibility of being able to learn asynchronously uh, and combining that with what you can do in the classroom with a great facilitator and really optimizing the time uh, of both the, the learners and, and the instructors so that they get the absolute most out of the training. So I, I think e-learning will become uh, more and more popular as we see that digital transformation and people taking a more uh, mature uh, development perspective from what they can do with these kind of technologies.